Okay, welcome to the second video. In this video, I want to give a brief introduction uh, to a little bit more about the Jupyter Notebook and uh, a little bit of intro to Python itself. Um, if uh, these things are um, not new to you, you can of course skip. I'm not going to go into great detail. There's a million videos and online resources to help you learn these tools. So I will just um, go over a few things and show you how I work it. So um, once you have Jupyter installed on your own computer, you can uh, run it. I recommend uh, to install uh, Miniconda or your, or maybe Anaconda, um, depending uh, on, a few, um, on, on preference, um, to get the basic tools for the class. And there's lots of ways to get Python and Jupyter installed, um, but um, Miniconda is going to get you where you want to be for most of the things in the class. So I have uh, Miniconda installed. I installed uh, uh, Jupyter and a lot of other packages that we are going to use in the class and that is in the instruction in the lecture notes and you can see how to do that yourself. But keep in mind um, the majority of your work is going to be not on Jupyter on your own computer uh, but you're going to be using uh, via Brightspace this website called Vocarium which provides a pre-installed, pre-set up Jupyter uh, environment where you will log in, you'll get your homework notebooks, and you'll be able to work right in the web browser. So um, you won't ever have to look at the terminal like I'm about to show you and um, uh, or in install anything on your own. Okay, But it's useful to be able to install it on your own because you might want it after the class or maybe you just prefer that. So I have it installed. That's where we're starting. Um, I opened a terminal here over on the right and um, I'm going to type Jupyter Notebook in the terminal. Uh, on Windows, you have to open the uh, Anaconda command prompt for this to work, as that there's not a terminal, but on Mac and Linux, you run Jupyter Notebook. And I am on Linux, uh, by the way. Um, if you see any things that are slightly different, uh, that might be why. OK, so Jupyter Notebook opened here. And what it gives you is a file interface. It shows you what files are in the directory. Um, so I have a folder on Jupyter Notebook, a Python file, an SVG image, a, a README a text file, and another Python file. Uh, happens to be where I started up Jupyter Notebook. And you want to make sure you start up Jupyter Notebook in the directory where the files are that you are working, or one that's you know, higher up the hierarchy so that you can then drill down by clicking on a folder like I, I just there. So it gives you a little fire, fire browser, file browser. And um, we're going to open up new notebooks. In Vocarium, you're going to open up Python 3.8 notebooks. Um, there will be a specific uh, Python version 3.8. Notice you can open up a terminal and a uh, make a new folder or a text file, uh, but we'll do uh, open up a notebook Python 3. So I do that and I end up with a blank Jupyter notebook here. It has one empty cell that I've started. We've, there's a menu bar with a variety of, of things that you can do. Help. Um, um, there's a lot of keyboard shortcuts, right? And I, I'll use uh, some of them to navigate and things. I'll press the buttons at first for you, but um, learning the keyboard shortcut saves a lot of time. Uh, there's some standard buttons. You can save your file, uh, insert a cell, run cells, etc. Okay. So in the cell, um, you can have different types of cells. And there's a drop down menu here code, markdown, raw, and heading. Okay. The only two that I'll really use uh, in the class are going to be code and markdown. And what markdown stands for is text. Um, so let's start with a markdown one. So if I just type some text in here, here is my text, right? And then I'm going to press uh, the run button. I'm actually going to execute the text file in it. And it actually then looks a little different, right? It's not, uh, if I double click that, It'll come back to an editable, editable uh, cell. So um, when the cell's green, it's editable, and then if I execute it, um, 
and it's blue and X selection is not edible. So this is the um, so the two modes of Jupyter Notebook, whether you're entering things to be executed or they've already executed and they look as they are. For the car markdown cells, um, what makes them special, if I edit here some more, you can do things like um, it uh, puts these, uh, you can use basic simple markdown to um, do things. My list, uh, item two, item three. So if I use uh, this so-called markdown um, uh, syntax, then uh, a link to Google, right? This is how you do a URL in markdown. Um, Google.com, for example. If I shift enter, notice that um, it renders. So I get this header. I get a nice looking um, um, list, and then I even get a hyperlink. Okay, so you can uh, you know type into Google Markdown syntax and find guides on how to type Markdown. So it uses Jupyter uses Markdown to um, let you type and make text cells and make them formatted nicely. Okay, and I'll do that. And the notebooks you receive from us will have a lot of these markdown cells, but you need to know if it's a markdown cell or a code cell. If it's a code cell, it's going to execute things using Python. Okay, and Jupyter can be set up for lots of different languages, but uh, we're going to be using Python. And we can see up here in the top right that it is a Python um, cell. So when I execute um, a code cell, which has this little in uh, bit here then I know I can get Python so I can do a equals 1 and I can execute that and if I type in a in the next cell shift enter I, I have stored one in the variable a right so now I've executed um, different uh, Python and some of the Python uh, things that we want to do each cell um, uh, will be a new line. You can put multi lines in there too. So I could do uh, a, uh, let's just do b equals uh, 2.5, c equals a string, which I'll put in uh, quotes there, uh, d equals, um, let's do um, just another number, 56. Yeah. So I could do multi line shift enter and then b, c, Oops, I did a capital, got an error. C, and if I can type C, D. Okay, so I can access those variables. IPython has some magic commands too that start with a percent. And one of them is whose. If I type whose, it shows me all the variables that are declared in the namespace. So, and it even shows their types, right? So I've got two integers, a floating point number, and a string that I defined there. Um, <clears throat> I can come back up and edit things, right? If I put an A equals two there, notice that this cell didn't change because I didn't execute it. But if I shift enter that cell again, I get the uh, changed value and I can re-execute all those cells and go and see that the value is now changed in the who is command also. So notice that my numbers for my inputs then are now 10 to 16. Um, you can even make them out of order, right? If I executed C, that now puts 17 here. We need to keep that in mind. Uh, one good thing to always do is if you have been working a lot and you're not sure um, where you're at in the order of the cells, you can always come up here to kernel, restart, and run all. I use this all the time to restart Python, run the cells in order, I've got one through seven, and then things are all in line. So before you turn in the notebook, restart, run all, make sure that everything runs, there's no, no uh, errors and such, okay? Um, if you ever have a very long um, um, uh, operating uh, thing, and I think wait is a function, right? No. Oh, I want time. Well, I'm going to do that. But uh, if any time a cell is running and it's taking too long and you're not sure if it's going to complete, you can stop it by pressing this stop button. And then you can always uh, restart 
so that you're in a fresh state. So sometimes you have to do that. Okay. Um, the next things to look at are maybe some more. Um, oh yeah, there's like this for for help. I want to show that. So there's a lot of built-in functions in Python. Um, what's a good one? The print function, right? So print, you can use it like this. It'll print whatever string you have. And notice it's different than the one up here at C. It doesn't have the uh, um, quotes around it. IPython lets you put a question mark behind any function and it'll open up its help file right here so I can then read how to use the print function and in fact there's a bunch of optional arguments there uh, that might be helpful and you can do that question mark after any function to see what it does okay so that's a helpful way to get some quick help um, you can also of course look it, look it up online so um, what are some of the things that we want to know in Python um, there's a lot of common data types that you want to use. If you want to group things together, um, you can use a list. So I can put one, two, three, uh, and a string here, and I get a list of things. So it groups all those things together. You can index items out of a list, a list like so. Notice that gave the fourth item. That's because Python is a zero index language. So zero is going to give you the first thing. And you can even give subsets. So I can go zero to two to get the first two items out of that list. Uh, similarly, there are tuples. Um, but more about list, right? I can uh, append things to a list. You can modify the list in place. So if I append, um, seven and then I look at my list it adds seven to the end all right there's a similar thing called a tuple um, let me make this bigger so uh, tuple instead of square brackets is in parentheses here it also groups things. Shift enter, and I can see what's in the tuple, and I can index things out of the tuple with square brackets. Second item, gonna be, yeah? But uh, you can't change the tuple, so I can't um, append anything to it, for example. get an error yeah so tuples are what you're called are, are immutable I can't change them in list I can so these are, are helpful the uh, for loops are nice right so I have a list I can set for thing in my list to loop through that list and I can print thing yep Python works on indentation okay so you have to indent four spaces if you press the tab key it will automatically do that for you uh, but it relies on that indentation to know what things to execute inside this for loop that is defined by this line the for the in and then the colon if I execute that I run the for loop print through things okay so you've got um, uh, loops uh, that you can walk through there's also while loops um, you know make use of those um, there's other data type a dictionary is very nice to use this way you can map things uh, so you can have a key so I'll say key one is a string here and then I do a colon and I'll store some value associated with that key 54 key uh, 2 right? and I'll store another number 89 key 
and those don't have to necessarily be in order. And just to prove that, I'll do key five and uh, make it a another num make it a floating point number here. So now I have this thing that maps keys to values, and to access those, it's a square bracket, and then I give it the key that I want, and it should return the value. So it gives me 89 if I ask for key number two. You can also um, loop through these two. The common way to do that is for key comma value. So I got a variable k and v in my dick dot items colon print first the key and then I'll print the value. Oops, it's supposed to be V. And then it went through successfully printed the key, the value, the key, the value, the key, the value. So we can move through those. Dictionaries are nice. So we got lists, dictionaries, tuples, uh, the basic data types. Those are m uh, most of the ones that we're going to see, I think, uh, are used uh, a lot. And then we can have. Um, uh, functions are a nice thing to look into. So if I want to make a function uh, that does something, so let's uh, make a function uh, that calculates uh, Pythagoras' theorem. Hopefully that's spell right. We want, want to give um, two sides of the triangle, A and B, and return uh, C. So we know that C then equals A squared plus B squared, uh, the square root. The easiest way to do the square root is um, raise it to 0 0.5. Okay. So in Python, two stars is uh, raising to a power. And then in a function, if I want to return the value C, I do that. So I defined a function also with indentation, just indentation, just like the for loop. And now I can use this function. Calc Pythagoras. I have a 12.2 and a uh, 1.3. Execute that, and then I have a function now that works and gives me, tells me how long the other side. Of that is, I guess I could give it more. You see, five. Okay, uh, that is a function. Um, I'm not going to go too deep into all the Python stuff. I've given you some resources. There's more in the lecture notes, but um, this gives you an idea of what it looks like in a Jupyter notebook. Uh, your restart and run all is going to be uh, your favorite help there. It stops on my. Uh, Twitter, so I'm going to comment that out. Pound is a comment in uh, Python. And then I'll try one more time. Restart and run all. And it executes my whole notebook. Okay, I'll save it. Maybe give it a title. My first notebook. And save. Yep. Close the stock stream, and I've got a, a notebook here. I could save, uh, give that file to somebody else for them to run, etc. Uh, don't forget the help, right? There's a lot of uh, pieces here um, you're going to be using in the class NumPy, SciPy, MATLAB, and SymPy. We'll all we'll talk about all those, uh, maybe even some pandas too. Um, there's oh yeah, the not markdown syntax here if you want. Uh, learning the keyboard shortcuts um, is quite helpful to navigate so you don't if you don't want to click your mouse all the time there's a little user interface tour that will teach you that um, the restart restart run all are helpful um, different cell buttons putting in new cells um, looking at the toolbars you can copy and paste uh, cells etc split them um, various other details and then your standard save as save um, rename um, download as is nice too you can download as a PDF um, 
markdown files, LaTeX files, different things, uh, depending on what you want there. And uh, once we've saved it, um, we got a file name, and I um, have my notebook like I want, and I could log out and the file browser is still over here and I can see that my uh, if I refresh it I guess I guess I shut down the notebook um, let me open up this again open that link my first notebook is there I guess my logout killed that that was a surprise to me but We'll uh, all learn some things together. And my first notebook is there. It's still running. I've clicked the running tab. I can see that that Jupyter notebook kernel is running. I can shut that down if I want. Otherwise, when you close Jupyter notebook, it will shut down too. Okay, um, that's the gist of the Jupyter notebook. I'm going to also do a little video showing you what it looks like in Vocarium through Brightspace, and you'll see to how we are going to. Um, um, be able to enter certain code for notebooks uh, there for it to automatically grade your work. All right. Finally, to I can close this browser window, but in fact, over in the terminal, I'm still running. Okay, so it's a web application, and I started from the terminal. I need to close it from the terminal. In the terminal, I'm going to press Control C. It says shut down this notebook server. Y for yes. Enter, and now I've killed uh, the Jupyter notebook. Okay, so it's, um, it's uh, you'll keep it running if you don't um, actually shut it down in the terminal there. Okay, well that is uh, some basics. You can ask questions in the work session about um, how the Jupyter Notebooks work and get more details, but uh, hopefully that helps for a start.